Hello everyone. Today we will go over the business access and business continuity use case for CenterStack server. The goal is still the same to be able to access a file server in the local area network in a new way. So traditionally, if you were to access a file server in the local area network, you would use virtual private network VPN. So now as a managed service provider, you have a new tool and a new platform, the center stack, and you can set it up in a data center. And now not only you can access the files and folders from the local file server, but also you can have another set of files and folders on the data center side to provide the business continuity, not only the access, but also multiple copies of the same uh, file server content. Since it's about the file server, so now let's go ahead and look at our demonstration file server here. On the root of the local uh, C drive, we have a file server share for the demonstration purpose for today. So before we start, we will need to install a file server agent or cloud server agent on the file server. And that server agent is a small piece of agent software that will communicate to this backend center stack server to set up the folder and also the Active Directory identity uh, communications there. So we started the migration wizard from the web portal and then this is the first time we do so. So the file server server agent hasn't been installed, so it wasn't found. So we just follow the workflow and download and install the file server agent. So what we are doing now is we are setting up a file server agent on the file server. And then that will communicate to the center stack and set everything up. The cloud server agent is a very small piece of software and I believe it's below 20 mega you know, 20 megabytes. And so the installation should be pretty quick. And after that installation, a reboot is required. So if you were on a production file server, you probably ha will have to wait until after the hours to do the reboot. And this is the demonstration. So we would just go ahead and reboot. And after reboot, log back in to the same user who installed the cloud server agent. So after logging in, there may be some applications starting up. There may be background services that's settling down. So wait a little bit until all the dust are settling down. Then our application, the logging screen should show up. And that's the logging screen to be able to connect, logging and connect to the center stack. So file server agent is a per tenant concept. So then when you're setting it up, you need to be able to connect the file server agent to the tenant administration, tenant administrator's account. And that's a per organization per tenant kind of concept. So now we just do a query for the audit trace so everything's green so that means the file server agent has been connected to the center stack so the setup is done and um, the file server agent is functioning so in reality the, uh, the in a local area network it's not that simple right so it's not just you have a file server and then that's it. So typically you are also having a Active Directory server in a local area network. So the Active Directory server will be controlling the identity and then the file server also the files and folder permission will be controlled by the uh, Active Directory as well. So now after the file server agent has been installed, so we can start the migration wizard one more time. And as you can see here, it's already seeing the file server share. So you can see it's a drop down list organized by the shares it found. And that's 
very um, easy to understand because the reason for the file server to exist in the first place is to be able to provide a collaboration you know, platform for users in the local area network, right? So then the form of the collaboration you know, starts from a local network share, a map drive. And so to be able to start the migration wizard and seeing those network shares and then be able to migrate them one by one. And as you can see here, the users that are on the uh, local area network share uh, showing up. So now you can pick and choose who to migrate over. So if we do a refresh, the folder is already showing up in the web portal. And now let's go ahead and check user. So you can see there are three AD users discovered and also imported. There's also a team folder showing up. And there's no users um, get pulled over yet. So now let's go ahead and add them. It could be normal because you know if you your file server share was published to an everyone group, and then so for now we don't have a everyone group in the cloud yet. So we need to explicitly add those users to the team folder. So a team folder is like a one-to-one -one mapping to a network share. So the network share is for the local area network, and then the team folder is for the wide area network, you know, quote unquote, the cloud. And now we are also checking some of the folder permissions. So the permissions are also getting imported from the, the file server. So we set up three different folders for three different employee, employees. And there's also a common folder for everybody. So the common folder, the folder permission was set to a domain user group, while the three folders each are set up. The folder permission was set to each individual uh, employee. So that's the way it's set up in the NTFS. And when the file server network share was imported over then it's the same for the permission was applied. So now we just log in as the the user who has the blue theme. That's the em employee number one. As you can see here, the administrator saw three different folders, but employee number one only seeing the employee one folder plus the common folder. So now let's go ahead and log in as the second user. The user has the red theme and the same thing the user only seeing the e2 folder plus the common folder but this user is not seeing all the three employee folders and that's what you want right so you set up the folder permission on the local you know file server network share and then those permissions are getting uh, synchronized over to the cloud side and then applied to the specific folders. So that's good. Um, we have three different employees so in this demonstration. So then let's go ahead and log in for um, the last employee here. So let's change the, the color so we can kind of use the color to tell who's who here. Um, it's pretty much the same idea. So uh, in employee number three, now it's only seeing you know you know one single folder plus the common area. So pretty much the folder control, permission control, security control is pretty much the same way as it was before. But now you can access them from the browser, and once you can access them from the browser, that means it's accessed. Uh, it's available from the cloud side, so you don't have to use the browser. You can use uh, native applications from Windows, from Mac, from uh, mobile devices such as the iOS application, the Android application. So your file server can be accessed by multiple different uh, endpoint devices and different form factors. So typically people call this kind of access, like the ability to access files and folders from the browser, from the mobile phone, from remote locations, they call it you know, file sync and share. And then 
more specifically, we call this solution, the center stack platform and solution, the managed file sync and share solution. So we put the emphasis on the managed word. So then that means for managed service provider, you can manage the center stack solution and then you can manage the file server as you were you know, manage, managing them in the past and also providing extra value to the file server, the access, new way of access, and also uh, business continuity that you have two different copies now, one in the cloud and one local. As I'm explaining the managed file server, uh, managed uh, file sync and share solution, I'm also doing some editing um, of the files. So it's a collaboration solution. So then you can modify, go to the common area and start modifying the files. And you will be able to see the different versions of the file. So that's another benefit. Um, the You can have version control on top of the local file server here. Um, in, in Windows, you could you know use the shadow copy to have the version. So it, it's more like implicit. You don't you know probably you don't see the versions um, too much, but this is more explicit version control. You can see the different revisions and different you know files you saved at different times. So that's another benefit that's added to the managed file sync and share solution. Um, so we are just simulating different users modifying the file at different times and on the right hand side there's you know preview to see the files and there's a v, you know v version uh, link you can check and check the revisions of the file and you can also see the files and uh, from the, the information panel there and all the users will have similar user experience. So um, you can see the preview of the file. And also, if you want to see the activity feed of who changed which file at what time, those kind of information are also available from the, uh, the web portal. So that covers the you know, how we use the cloud server agent to elevate a local file server into the cloud and also have the same Active Directory identity and the same NTFS permission getting synchronized over to the cloud side. And then also the two sides are synchronizing files back and forth, right? So we just checked the file on the local file server and then that file gets synchronized back into the file serv server. So now we are just using as a quick summary, we are set up a cloud server agent on the local file server and then that helps push the files into the cloud and manage as a you know like a two-way synchronization. And then the remote users can access the files and folders directly from the data center because it's closer to Typically, it's closer to the internet backbone. It's faster. Um, and then the local users can continue to access the local file server for local performance. So now let's say, what if? What if the local file server is aging and you want to replace that? That's one, um, another business continuity um, we want to cover and also the other possibility could be that you're expanding your business and then you expand the business from the you know, LA office over to the New York office. And then in the New York office, you want to be able to set up another local file server. So um, the users at the New York local office can continue to enjoy the local experience, the local performance, and also less affected by the internet glitch and internet problems and um, so, you know, you are not affected by the limitations of the technology, but you kind of, you know, take advantage of the, the technology there. So now we are um, logging into this, you know, new server. And to be able to um, set up a local 
uh, files, we need to install the the same uh, cloud server agent on this new server and log in to the same tenant account. So then we can see what's in the cloud and what to synchronize back into the new server. So we, we just go ahead and install the same file server agent here. Uh, same process. So small program, agent software, install it, reboot, and then back in business. So it's rebooting now. That's fine. So just be a few moments and then it should be back um, up and running. So basically we are still talking about business continuity and then now we are trying to set up a new server either as a replacement for the old server or as a another redundant copy you know somewhere in a different branch office or even in the same office if you want to so now the um, applications are starting up and then the logging dialog is showing up so remember we the file server agents are connected by the account you know it, it it's using so so now we log back in into the same tenant account and then immediately we are seeing the file server share that has been synchronized upwards into the cloud from the old uh, file server so now to make sure that um, it's you know 100% clean um, let's go ahead and create a new folder make a new uh, folder under the C drive and then this is going to be a brand new folder so then we know it's going to be empty from the get-go and then the you know once we set up the link to local so this is link to local feature um, the whatever is in the cloud is going to be linked back to the local meaning it's going to be synchronized downwards initially into the local server here so let's say I'm in the New York office I have a new uh, branch office and now the the file server contents are like following me back down to my new office now and it's linked to the local and that also means it's linked to the cloud so now I can make a change to this file and this file should be um, modified into the cloud and then also back down to the other server so the first thing you can check is you know you go to the device manager you're already seeing two different devices right so that's good one device is the old file server and one device is the new file server so that's good we're just checking the file it's not coming back into the old file server yet so just maybe take a few minutes so now let's go and check the file in the web browser directory and then take a preview yeah it, the change is already you know uploaded into the cloud on the center stack server side so now let's check the old file server now and check the audit trace looks like yeah it, the file has been uh, synchronized down already so now let's check the file on the file um, on the fold inside the folder yeah the file has come back right so as a quick summary um, what we cover today is the business continuity and business access um, use case for the center stack server so business continuity is kind of like a sub category of the business access the goal is to be able to access the file server and then because the files are replicated into two or three different places now you have business business continuity to access the file server and compares to the you know old cumbersome VPN um, now because the file is closer you know in the data center so it's closer to the internet and so it's faster to access and also you have a copy in the local file server so it's kind of a hybrid mode the local users are using the local file server and then the cloud remote users are using the cloud copy so it's kind of the state of the art is the hybrid mode you are taking advantage of the best of both world so this is business continuity thank you